A stripped down take on some brand new songs. Which class good man? And a few other surprises. But I've been cheating through this life. This is a special Vampire Weekend Radio edition of Sirius XMU Sessions. Welcome to Sirius XMU Sessions with Vampire Weekend. I'm Jenny Ellisque. Hi, it's Ezra and CT here in our LA studio. What's so, up? Hey, thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. <laughs> um, and thanks for doing the Vampire Weekend takeover of Sirius XMU. A lot so of fun. cool. Yeah. And of course, all of this is in celebration of uh, the new VW album, Only God Was Above Us, album number five. I might burst into tears if I think for too long about how excited I am about this album, which. <laughs> Having, you know, for listeners, we're recording this ahead of the album coming out. And so I just got my full advanced copy and listened to it and felt the whole array of feelings that I associate with a Vampire Weekend listening experience. So congratulations. This is fresh. This is fresh. First listen is fresh. First listen this morning. Oh, wow. wow. The whole thing? Wow. The whole thing, first time this morning. Crazy. Yeah, I love it. I mean, I have so many questions. I'll get to a few of them in the course of this time. And y'all are playing us exclusive renditions of songs from the album in a configuration that is a special configuration for sessions such as these. It's it's um, you'll hear there's the there's the drum machine in the mix here, which is a very cool effect. With this one, we had some time to think, and we thought, all right, well, first of all, let's get uh, Amber Kaufman come sing some harmonies. One of the great voices of our our time um love amber is a great opportunity to sing with her and then yeah just trying some like stripped down stuff bayo is turning on the seaberg drum machine which is the suicide drum machine oh amazing we're lucky we have access to high quality vintage uh, gear due to ariel rekshad our producer and uh yeah it was actually it felt like a cool opportunity to do some different stuff Amazing. So we're going to be listening to a couple of the singles from the album and also an older VW tune. And at the end, a Grateful Dead cover as well. But I want to start by asking about like, yeah, when did the first little sparkles of these songs in this album start to emerge? Was it as long ago as Father of the Bride? It depends how you define it. Like, of course, as soon as Father of the Bride was done, this happens with every album. I find myself thinking about the next album. So in a sense, that's when the it started, really starting to think, well, what could, what what uh, what ideas are there that could work that we've already done and start kind of making, I don't know, I wish there's something better to say than mood boarding, but, you know, roughly gathering ideas and stuff. And what was the sort of kind of linchpin moment of it feeling like, oh, there is an album coming together? Because I feel like it was, you know, you and I, have we keep up in between these mm-hmm. moments. And I remember talking to you, um, I guess, about a year ago about how it felt like it was all sort of starting to come together very quickly at that point what was a sort of moment of like or or song from the album that began to solidify that feeling that like this is an album these songs are all belong together well you know a a real kind of like bridge song that really started make make me understand okay i I see where this album is heading is capricorn because that was an early demo i made with ariel so we had you know the basic parts acoustic guitar maybe for some of our fans they might associate more with uh, father of the bride slightly crunchy energy and so we started doing it. i was like okay the song could be really good and so i remember one day we made the first version of the demo i just remember like being at home thing like i don't know i had this instinct i want this album to be our hardest whatever whatever that means you know in, in and i remember thinking like i want this a song to have like a big part because it was it already felt good it felt like like a nice song just acoustic piano and stuff and then it kind of came back like let's have like a big like you know like kevin shields type part and then we started working on or i'll get bust out the whammy pedal and i was kind of like okay i think our music can handle it and so we'd never we've never used particularly used a lot of distortion in fact the early version of the band was very much anti-distortion and um that was a kind of good proof of concept to be like okay there is like a way in which vampire weekend songwriting can be mashed up with some like heavier textures and still feel like us so that was like a big moment for me being like all right i I can feel where this is heading that's a perfect segue on into a performance of capricorn by vampire weekend on sirius xmu sessions can reach the moon now can turn the tide The world looked different When God was on your side Who bears the future 
Do they know why? I know you're tired of trying Listen clearly, you don't have to try Capricorn, the year that you were born Finished fast, and the next one wasn't yours Too old for dying young, too young to live alone Sifting through centuries for moments of your own Jenny Ellis, you joined by Ezra and CT from Vampire Weekend for this week's episode of XMU Sessions. Uh, we're going to be listening to another song from the new album and an older one. And I'm so curious if uh, making a new album kind of instantly imparts a new perspective like on the previous stuff. Like as soon as you mm. start playing and f- like finishing new songs and especially rehearsing them and getting ready and starting to integrate older songs into these sets with the new album behind, you know, just behind you, like does it bring you kind of to a new perspective on your music? Well, I think there's something about the fifth album that the sample size has just grown to a point where you can kind of, you can interact in new and interesting ways with the older stuff. Whereas first second third albums you're kind of you're sometimes desperately trying to create your own lane to create your own world and now by this time we've been around for a while uh and there's a a lot of time has passed since our first record and since our first shows and everything but yeah something about this one has felt like we're not in a bad way but in a 
in a good way to me, like very self-contained. Like we have a universe that we've created. We have alternate versions of some songs that have happened on different tours. And now we can do a new alternate version that references the last tour and two tours ago, et cetera. Um, so yeah, there's something about this one that's felt like we're really in a way that makes it more interesting to me to look forward and be like, wow, we can really go deeper and wider within our own universe. Yeah. Like a prism. It's like the vampire weekend prism that you can kind of put on, you know, almost anything. I was intrigued, you know, talking about, you know, putting the distortion, uh, Ariel putting the distortion on Capricorn, mm. because not that there haven't always, what a weird structure or sense, not that there haven't always um, triple, quadruple <laughs> negative, but been like crazy cool production things on, you know, starting with Contra probably, mm. but I remember hearing Diane Young for the first time in the studio with, with you and Rostam, like in New York, and, and that baby, baby thing felt so crazy at the time, you know, of a choice. And I feel like listening, again, for the first time this morning to the full mm. album, there's so much cool, crazy production stuff uh, that I wonder, like, yeah, just did you make a decision to to, like, just let it go lean into it and just be like that's we know what we sound like nothing's off limits like ariel is ultimately like a member of the band and so like go there well yeah totally i mean with with ariel i always really trust his instincts and if he wants to push something i'm always curious as to why i might not always agree but i'm always like all right let's let's hear it let's let's try it And, and more often than not i'm i like it um but yeah, the I think there's always a sense every time we make a record, we want to find new territory. But there's also a danger in that you can we like we all like all sorts of music, right? We've all grown up with the internet generation, so we know so much, so many types of music. It's all available, and there's a lot of uh, territory we've never gone to that maybe we shouldn't, you know, that maybe it's not time for us. So that's what's interesting. It's almost like you're feeling in the dark trying to feel where is the next step that feels fresh but also still feels like you. And that's not always easy. And kind of like what CT was saying before, there's this self-referential thing where maybe when you're younger, you're kind of more concerned, well, how does Vampire Weekend fit in? let's go all the way back to the beginning. How do we fit in with this current wave of indie rock or New York bands? And that's more on your mind. How do I fit in with them? By the time you get to your fifth album, you kind of have to think, where does this music fit in with us? Is this the next step for us? Is this the right fifth Vampire Weekend album? Because if people start asking questions like, oh, well, how does this fit in with like rock in 2024? Come on. I don't know. You know, I can't answer that question. I know you didn't ask that question, but I'm just saying, rock in 2024. I don't know. You tell me. What is that even I don't know. mean? But what does it even it's mean? It's a hard question. <laughs> or like, how do you fit in with like the pop music in 2024? Again, this is, who who knows? But but with this album, there's a real feeling, and this, and this at the end, and, and even throughout, try something new. Does that feel like Vampire Weekend's fifth album? And I know this sounds like it's a kind of an annoying answer. Like, what is it? If you don't know what swing is, you'll never know or something. It's all, it's just a feeling like that feels like us right now. It feels right. What about that? Doesn't. I don't know why. Yeah. I mean, yeah, at a certain point it is whatever you say it is and your instincts are the only, you know, like the only correct ones. Yeah, I would imagine that just like with anything with like getting older, you're like, oh, I should trust my instincts. Totally. I always, one example I always think of is like, you know, diehard, like, punk rock dude. He might not want to have a mohawk when he's 70. He, he might, also might. He also might. Which he is might. Fine. He might. It's up to him. <laughs> but he might, not have, he might not have enough hair in the middle by then. And so he has to make a decision about the principles embodied in the music that I love and the art I love and, and the values that I have. What does that look like when I'm 70? Maybe it looks like a mohawk. Maybe it looks like a suit and tie. Who knows? You can always give your dog a mohawk. You know. Give the dog a mohawk <laughs> and you, you, you put on a suit and tie. Exactly. Yeah. That's Let's, kind of a, that's like a tangential SLC punk reference, which I. Which oh, I right. Uh, Great movie. Oh, snap. Fight the system from the inside. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, that's the, essentially the, the, the big end point. <clears throat> Love an SLC punk reference. Also, y'all are headed to SLC, so it's all that's coming right. together. Sure, Kill the court. Um, let's, uh, let's listen to a couple more songs and we'll come back and talk some more. In times of war, the education. 
graduated class knew what to do In times of peace their pupils couldn't meet your baby blues 400 million animals competing for the zoo It's such a bleak sunrise Untrue Classical. I know that was for shake, shake. Bridges burning, bodies break. It's clear something's gonna change, and when it does, which class good remains? Day. That sinking feeling fades But never really goes away A staircase up to nothingness Inside your DNA Well that's a bleak Sunrise Untrue Unkind And unnatural How the crew With time Becomes classical Sun. 
We're surviving, we're still living I was stronger I've been cheating on, cheating on you You've been cheating on me But I've been cheating through this life And all it's suffering Oh Christ Am I good for nothing? When we left in the morning And I was told that walk Is how we landed on these shows I just thought the drums of war Would be loud of warning I've been cheating on, cheating on you You've been cheating on me But I've been cheating through this life And all its suffering Oh Christ Am I good for nothing? Now, baby, I know death probably hasn't happened yet Cause I don't remember living life before this And darling, our disease is the same one as the trees Unaware that they've been living in a forest Cheating on me, I've been cheating on, cheating on you. You've been cheating on me, but I've been cheating through this life and all its suffering. Oh, Christ, am I good for nothing? It's Jenny Elliskew and Vampire Weekend on Sirius XMU Sessions. Ezra and CT are here for the chit-chat part of the festivities. Bayo had a book club he had to get to. Bayo had a very say. important book club. Yeah, right. he needs to read. He didn't read. shirk his responsibilities, but he had let us know that this was coming for a while. We so. need Bayo to read so that we can get off the hook and not have to read. That's right. The balance is out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I want to talk a little bit, uh, A, about the group of people performing in here with you in this session mm-hmm. that we're listening to. Obviously, you mentioned Amber Kaufman earlier, the violin player. Who's who's that person? Uh, Ray Swan. Yeah. And he's, um, you know, we, we first met him years ago when he was touring with the Killers. And uh, I believe we met him at a, on a French television show in 2009. Oh, that was the first time? I believe so. Or like really talked to him anyways. Right. Could we, you know, back then we'd probably be at the same festival as the Killers or something. Thing. Ray's about our age, and he does maybe one of his first touring experiences. And um, 
yeah, Ray is is a new addition to the live show, and he's been a, an amazing addition because at first we were trying to figure stuff out, um, needing some new hands just to like hold down some guitar parts and stuff, which Ray is very capable, a very capable guitar player. But if you hear on this session, he's a, a shredder violinist, and actually it's so nice to have uh, a violin in the mix, whether for going back to the early material and playing parts that were never played before, or even just switching stuff up on like Father of the Bride stuff. It's just, a, it's such a nice texture to have in the mix so yeah he's now a touring member of the band and there's also is there there is someone else uh, new colin yeah, yeah. colin killily who again we at first we're just like oh do we know anybody who can play guitar and so oh, this guy colin can hold it down on guitar but also he plays sax and having saxophone again it totally fits a lot of our old music and literally there is i mean like on classical there's like a big sax so they're like yeah this is so great to have um these multi-instrumentalists so in rehearsing, I mean, I know there's a bunch of stuff coming up that's like kind of like the first burst of activity, Jazz Fest and mm-hmm. your show during the eclipse on the 8th. But then when it's out to the headlining tour section, like, is it a complete reconsideration of all of the repertoire for this new configuration of people for like what you're going to be playing on the road? I think there's a natural reconfiguration based on who's playing. Yeah. And, you know, like the way Brian Jones, who played guitar with us last time, would play something is different than the way Colin would think about even phrasing or approaching a part, even if they're more or less playing the same part. And so I think that there's always a little bit of a little bit of that. And sometimes it's, it's as simple as that as just different people playing the same stuff. There's a different feel, a different mix. And then sometimes there's very conscious reconsiderings of like, let's say Sunflower, for example, we had a very specific cool version for Father the Bride, and we want to keep some of that energy, but change it to fit the new mood and the new tone. So there's you know, it's similar but different in a way that to me feels like a through line. And again, like we're saying, refining us or something or a more current version of what it feels good and right to do. Yeah. So I think that there's both there's sort of natural reconfigurings and then very conscious, like where else can we go with this song? Are we going to get an eight minute Cape Cod Quasa Quasa? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what the fan, that's what the. Right, I don't know if we ever if we ever did. Maybe we should. That's a good thing to return to. Didn't we do that once? Because well, it depends on how we, you want to categorize actually it. We stretched it out. Because well, we did. There was a couple times when didn't we do like um. Oh, here, here comes, comes the, the sun, sun in the middle. middle. Yeah, maybe. So then it depends on how you want to set. Let's categorize that. Do you make right. a new track on the CDR? Do you you know do you yeah. how you're how you're breaking it down? Right. You know I um because this is this is an apt way into the cover that's closing out this session of uh the Grateful Dead's Peggy O. But you know I was reading up on this song just mm-hmm. to, like prep for this and like my understanding is that it's a rendition of a classic like a folk song uh, which so much you know of popular music is right. re- rephrasings of a folk song and the dead have a definitive version of their own song known as Peggy O of which there are many recordings over the years when I asked my device to play me Grateful Dead <laughs> Peggy O how the, many options did it well you? it just played the platform just chose a version from at the Palladium oh, like uh, late 70s yeah which was almost uh, eight, I, it was funny because I was like I'm like how long is it it was like it was eight minutes so that's what yeah. reminded me of eight minute Cape Cod but it's been interesting that Vampire Weekend has evolved into incorporating some of the beauty of the live music scene. You know, I don't want to say jam bands because it feels more like it's not so much about jamming as it is about the live music, you know, side of things. Yeah, Um, it's funny when when we were just talking before about the changing things up for this tour, I I had a thought that maybe we could define ourselves as a slow motion jam band. (laughs) If a real jam band is making improvisatory choices during the song, okay, we might not do too much of that, but over weeks and months and years, we'll make all sorts of little creative choices to spice up the live show. So, you know, it might it might take us a while, but, you know, we are trying to bring some of that flavor to keep things interesting. Yeah, that is, that's like, yeah, so that is part of like, yeah, even though the, obviously the individual players bring their flavor, but there is kind of a mission to let the songs change, right? Am I understanding well, that correctly? I think also to have the live show be... Ideally, even when there are similarities and certain setless things that maybe will carry over from night to night or run to run or whatever, I think one of the deepest and most important things, speaking as a longtime self-identified jam bander, one of the most beautiful things about that scene is that when you go to a show, whether it's good or bad, it's only happening that way that time. And I feel mm-hmm. like we that is an, some energy that we caught on to last time, especially with like the request section when, you know, we had practiced for so long, we like <laughs> knew literally every song we'd ever performed and could call it up on, you know, when someone would call something out. I'm not sure if that's returning necessarily, but there was the, this idea that this show, this experience, this connection, such as it is, is only happening here on this night in this venue, this, you know, the set time or whatever, that I, I feel like that is something that was really amazing for me to experience that felt new to Vampire Weekend on the Father 
of the bride tour. And even if, yeah, some of the jammier adjacent elements are still there, but maybe they're a little bit deeper held, that idea that, that yeah, it's only happening this once, I think is still like a really awesome thing that is... Well, we'll see. We haven't played the shows yet, but from my, my experience yeah. of the rehearsals, we're, that's still very much present. And when we switch up the set, yeah, it's so, so much more engaging for us. Like the uh, otherwise, when we used to just do the same show every time, you know, you're just kind of like, all right, wait, you know, there's nothing new to think about each day. And to be like, oh, right, we haven't played that one in a couple of weeks. Okay. Like, I don't know, it just engages your brain in a different way. Yeah, I'm extra hyped that the L.A. show is going to be Ska Night at the Hollywood Bowl sort <laughs> yes. of vibes. So tell, tell us the lineup. For it's that. a Voodoo Glow Skulls, English Beat, and Vampire Weekend. So Ska around the globe. Voodoo Glow Skulls, SoCal, English Beat, maybe based in SoCal now, but of course, originally English. <laughs> and, uh, and Vampire Weekend, bringing that fourth wave of New York Ska. Amazing. I will be there with bells on because bells would be good accompaniment for Scott yeah, Knight at the right. Hollywood Bowl. Absolutely. <laughs> We're going to get into this uh, this cover of Peggy O to wrap it up. And thanks so much, guys, for coming in to do this. Thanks, thanks for, for having, having us. us. Spent 
the loot he had in the country, yo. As we rode out to Fenerio, as we Heard a stripped down take on some of the brand new songs, which class good man, and a few other surprises. But I've been cheating through this life. Catch an all new, exclusive Sirius XMU session from Ezra, Chris, and Chris throughout the month on Vampire Weekend Radio, or whenever you want in the Sirius XM app. Just search Vampire Weekend. <laughs>